G'day guys. Um, this is a video looking at um, the outcomes of um, somebody taking Novavax and then being tested. So uh, one of my subscribers has had the Novavax jab and then decided to go and actually do a troponin test uh, for myocarditis and also um, do a test for a D-dimmer for clotting factors. So let's take a look at uh, the results of uh, the person. Let me just share my screen. So basically this is a pathology test that was done in New South Wales um, at this laboratory. Now I've, I've hidden the person's name for privacy reasons, obviously. And the what they're looking at is how much of this serum, so the, the actual serum troponin one, um, there is the I and then there's the T. The I is the most sensitive one. Um, and this is HS high sensitivity Beckman. So this is a method of testing. Um, and this troponin one HS Beckman basically gives you a 90, 99th percentile accuracy. So basically they say equal or greater than 99, 99th percentile, which pretty much says close to 100. Microdata injury is unlikely if the specimen collected shortly after the onset of symptoms repeated after, blah, blah, blah. That's just a general statement in that regard. So what was his result? Troponin, less than two nanograms per litre. So what are the actual, what shouldn't you be over or equal to? So as a male, if you're equal to or greater than 20 nanograms per um, litre, or in a female, equal or greater than 10 nanograms per litre. Maybe this is a reason why women are actually having worst outcomes because, you know, troponin levels, when they, when basically um, these levels go up, it's an indication that basically, um, you know, people, women are more vulnerable to, to myocarditis and a whole lot of the, these injuries. It's probably why we've seen women have more issues with their general, you know, um, um, sort of health sort of outcomes compared to men. There have been more reported issues with the reproductive systems and a lot of different things. And I suspect that they are more vulnerable to um, this mRNA type technology compared to males. So basically looking at myocarditis type injury, pretty much we can safely say that it is um, around the, just slightly over probably um, greater than two, which is bugger all, which is basically we're talking about a 10th, a 10th or a fifth of the female. He is a male. So it's a 10th in his case. So that's pretty much that one. Now let's see the, the D dimmer. So this is, again, I've hit his, his name. This is basically about clotting factors. So D dimmer comment, if this test was re requested for sus suspected vaccine induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia, please refer to this link below regarding interpretation of the D-dimmer result. And that's actually a website, a document, if required additional advice, blah, 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 blah. I think he's pretty much fine. Um, so when we're looking, obviously these numbers of clotting factors are very different for, for women um, through the different trimesters in that regard. As you can see, for women, it does rise as, now, this is for both clotting factors for both male and female, no difference. It's not sex specific. So at normal ranges, so people that are 
greater than 60, that means should be around um, 0.5. And people who are younger than younger than 60. Basically, that range is 0 0.75. So his range is 0 0.25, a third of that. So basically, these are the normal ranges. He's a third of the range. That shows the superiority, I believe, of a carnival diet. That means less clotting factors, you know, because you've got less of those insulin type inducing um, clotting factors or sugar related inducing clotting factors and all that sort of stuff. So when you take all that garbage of processed food out and you reduce it, these are what they consider the normal ranges. But I would suspect he's closer to the ancestral normal range <laughs> in both those, in both those things. This is how far we've actually, you know, where we consider these ones being normal when somebody in a carnival diet is at a third or a, a tenth in the other one in terms of, in terms of uh, you know, those sort of effects or outcomes. So it's, you know, pretty much what it's confirmed is it's confirmed what we saw in phase one, phase two, and phase three of the Novavax trials. We did not see any increase in clotting factors. We didn't see any um, increase in myocarditis, plus anaphylaxis and many other um, sort of conditions. Being a more traditional type, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that. As I said, I pointed out, it hasn't gone through a five to seven year efficacy, which all vaccines should go through. So obviously being a new vaccine, there is the potential there could be one in a million or one in a billion people that may, for some reason, unknown or for some rare genetic disorder, may react to, um, uh, you know, to the, maybe to, um, to the adjunct, the Barker extract, or may react to something um, like the actual virus itself in a very adverse even in a small a very small amount so those people would would also be at high risk with the current omicron that's getting around very fast so um it wouldn't really make much difference in that regard so generally speaking if the outcomes are better than what would be from the actual virus itself well then you can't argue that basically um there are worse outcomes even if after seven years, we, we identified, you know, a rare person here or there, or a rare group here or there. Generally speaking, we, ne we saw nothing within all trials, and those trials were conducted. Let's not forget. Oh, so people have seen the information of this person. Let's not forget those trials were conducted in hospitals. These weren't like, for, like the other companies, you know, that were basically doing things that, um, uh, you know, that are related to what, what you could say is that they, they were doing their own trials and controlling them, obviously, because they knew that this technology had issues. It did have in oncology, as I've shown you guys before. So I'm not surprised that basically they did, took that approach. When Novavax doing a more traditional, they said, nah, we're just gonna put it out in hospitals amongst a lot of sick people. So their group were not young people or whatever. Their group were basically people with half of them had comorbidities. If you remember on in the, in the, in the third trial, more, you know, half the, the groups and the other ones were in hospital for a lot of other reasons. And they basically were randomized and, uh, you know, double blind, placebo controlled, and pretty much we saw no issues.
there. So I'm not surprised this person is getting similar zilch issues when it comes to, and also, you know, the, the differences between the D-dimmer and the actual troponin um, sort of a result is way lower than you find in the general population. That shows the superiority of the actual um, uh, carnivore diet as well to have these very low levels compared to the general population, what they call the average, because those are the averages we're coming th from. So you'd expect a carnivore to be much better than the average. And that's what that's shown. So um, I don't know how long this guy has been a carnivore for. I don't think he's been for a very long um, period of time, but even a short period of time, if you clean out the garbage, you're going to get better results. So you're going to be healthier and you're going to get far better results compared to someone who's eating garbage all the time. So this was based, based on to provide information. There's a lot of basically misinformation out there and a lot of people are concerned. Um, should I take this? As I say to people, you don't need to take it. If you, if you don't need to travel or you don't need to basically hold a job, you don't need it. You know, um, you know natural immunity is superior in my personal opinion. But uh, if you need to take it, you can be confident that it's not going to basically cause you a whole lot of issues. And as I said, if you're concerned and you want rapid clearance out of your system, vitamin D and taurine to basically beef up your T lymphocytes, your first line of defense. So when you actually do the injection, you'll basically clear it out very fast, whatever, whatever comes in. It's a small amount. It's not replicating. You want to clear it out as fast as possible. That's where you want a strong immune system, strong T lymphocytes to do the job. So I've discussed that before. You guys know um, the drill. Um, so we'll leave it at that. But pretty much we can be confident from these, from at least for this one person and N of one, that uh, there were no adverse effects that we could actually, of these key markers, which is myocarditis and clotting factors. Didn't see them. So I think we can be quite confident that people, um, if they're forced to take um, an option, it's not going to be high risk in that regard. So we can confidently say it's not going to be high risk. Could there be, because of the lack of five to seven year um, uh, you know, trial period, could there be you know, one in a billion or one in a million people, maybe, you know, but I don't think that's going to be myocarditis or I think it's just going to be potentially to the adjunct or something, a bit of, you know, you know, sort of anaphylaxis or very mild in that regard. I don't think it's going to be anything severe or anything like that to be personally, um, you know, so because these compounds have been used um, in supplements and other things, and they haven't shown any severe anaphylaxis anyway. Um, uh, you know, so I haven't seen any data. I, I did search and try and find something. I couldn't find anything. If somebody has come across where the adjunct that's in this has shown any adverse effect anywhere, I haven't been able to find it. And I've looked quite extensively. Please let me know. Um, but based on the current information and this person's sort of, um, uh, you know, results from the first jab of Novavax, doesn't seem too bad to me anyway for those key issues that most people are concerned about. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. See you.